continually evolving. Today, we witness a shift in tourism paradigm. And the cultural knowledge that we have uh, is very important. Um, this one is an Ifugao Bulul that has been lent to us. So, silk screen. So we, what we need to do is just get the first layer on the top layer, the measurement. We will now be sure that you will not be consultant dependent and you will now be able to put together your own museums with this assistance from the others. The basic tools that we set up the studio, a camera that you're comfortable with, together with it. Um, also, generally, um, museum staff are advised not to pursue. In doing that, I'd like to focus on the two important words in that formulation, which is to curate and to exhibit. To curate uh, is to So why are museums important? Because museums and galleries give us an insight um, into the history of humankind. So even John Dewey, um, who is a prominent leader in
Okay, good morning everyone. Uh, mapia pia, maayad ayad, maabig abukla kumuyo halban, mayad nga temprano, maupay nga aga sa inyong tanan. Naghalo na mga ating good morning greetings. No? Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Good morning everyone. Welcome to day two of our week. 11 uh, for the museum management training. Uh, yesterday, we had a very interesting talk with uh, Mr. Gerald Gonzalez, uh, who, talk, who walked us through, through uh, the process of developing a museum website. So this morning, uh, we have a very interesting talk again on uh, developing 3D museums. No? So we welcome back uh, Ms. Everett, Chris Miranda from, uh, good morning, Everett. Good morning. Good morning. Doc, Doc Annalyn Hiki and Salvador. <laughs> How are you po? Mabuti naman. <laughs> okay, so uh, we welcome Everett. Uh, she's with us since uh, year one of our museum management training and talked about how we can utilize digital platforms for our uh, museum. So I would like to introduce Everett Chris Miranda. She graduated with a BS in commerce, major in marketing. Wait, my uh, major in marketing management at the La Salle University. Then she pursued her MA in information management at the Institute of Technology and Information at the Atenea de Manila University. She started her career in telecommunications as product manager of data services for six years. She also spent 16 years in GMA New Media Incorporated uh, this is the G digital arm and future proofing agent of GMA Network. She was senior vice president and headed NMI Solutions, or previously called as Digify. This is a techno creative lab which specializes in digital marketing, social development, and digital innovation, where she also supervised the technology integration in different local museums or exhibitions, no, such as the Museo Cordillera. She is currently with PLDT Incorporated as head of product product marketing for digital services of Beyond Access. So without further ado, we would like to welcome back uh, Everett. Thank you again, uh, Doc Ikin, Salvador, and to our chairperson, uh, Raymond Ravillos, for inviting me again to this uh, year two, our MMT year two. And uh, magandang umaga sa lahat. Good morning. Uh, maaga, maayong buntag, maayong uh, aga sa inyong lahat. No? So I, I, I cannot speak the other uh, dialects, but I'm so glad to be back. So allow me to start um, my presentation. Allow me to share my slide. Okay. So building the virtual museum. So quite interesting, no? So I've been watching the videos for the past 11, 10 weeks, no? Even yesterday, see si Gerard from BCB, no? Talk, talk about uh, the website. Um, my understanding also, our progression now, level one tayo of MMT year two. So year two, it's all about co-curation. Very inter interesting word. It's more on the application. But in my previous talks last year, no, um, I already uh, helped you, um, gave you an idea on the execution, on how to create a website also. Uh, we talk about social media. Uh, we talk about what can you do about your uh, website. We also taught you about uh, how to create um, stage a webinar. No? Tapos meron coming quick overview with my team also last year on how to create a virtual museum. So that's last year. So in level one, tayo, I think after this uh, three uh, sessions to go, we will go, you guys will go to level two of MM20 year two, level two. In level two, I think um, the intent is to bring you to Baguio and some of you will be attending online. There will be technical workshop and there will be um, uh, technical assistance. No? And then level three, this is the in-situ visit of the MMT uh, team together with the consultants to your museums to check your readiness, right? So I just put it here, but we are all on the same page now. Um, and the exciting part really is level three. 
ever since I've been excited to actually uh, see your output. No? So <laughs> I'm really anticipating by level three world will actually see your output. No? Um, for the past weeks then, um, you've attended various topics on the role of the museum by Sir Danny, on design and architecture uh, by architect Marjorie, architect Miguel Sosa, a uh, topic on preventive conservation. And there was also Joan Medrano on the design of fabrication. There was also a topic on community management and marketing. Marketing is also one of my um, uh, focus no, in my day-to-day -day job, uh, creating products, brand marketing. Okay, and having said that, I want to go to the, my first slide. No? A brand is no longer what we tell it is. It is what customers tell each other it is. I just want to start with this. By the way, this is a quote from Scott Cook. He's a great marketer. He's with PNG. He's also with eBay. No? What does it mean? Um, tayo, no, as, as a museum operator, HE, part of the HEI, we also carry our museum. We, we, it's also a brand. No? Uh, we cannot say, na, yeah, my, my, my museum is amazing. It's fresh. It's great. We cannot, always, we cannot be the one to claim that. It will be our guest. It will be those who visit our museum, who see us online, who can tell us who we are. So that's an important consideration. Um, their perception of their brand, or their perception of our museum is more important than how we actually say our brand is, right? So yun yung pinaka-point niya. So... Um, I will go here, no? So it's important. This is a typical journey. We are always discovered online. We are always discovered in the social media platforms such as Facebook, of course, the Twitter, there's TikTok, no? That's the... Uh, pag tinitingnan yung TikTok and Facebook posts or Instagram, Instagram medyo curated yan, eh. TikTok medyo raw yung video, no? So these are platforms that we use for discovery, which means nandun na yung mga tao, they try to discover us. No, but it doesn't end there. We bring them to our website. In our website, this where this where our virtual museum. So very important yung topic ni Gerard yesterday. No, how to design a website? It was really detailed. Step one to step two, step three. No, you won't go wrong. So you just have to follow that and prepare for that. Then when you invite them to your website, this is where the engagement should be should start. And then from that engagement, it could be a preview. Then you bring them to your physical site. So from here, next start na yung experience. So I just want to point out, it's all about the experience. No, it's not what they see, just see, no? It's how they experience your museum. So uh, we should make every interaction count. Even the small ones, they are all relevant. So you just have to put yourself in the shoes of your audience and think of ano pa ang desired journey niya if they want to visit us. So ano ba dapat yung walkthrough niya? So something to think about. And if you agree with me, I just want to see first a reaction from you. It's all about interaction. Can you give me a hands uh can you can you show me uh ah, well, I, I cannot see your okay great great I just want to see a heart <laughs> perfect okay yeah thanks for the hearts no I cannot count those and dami okay eto pad unlike a typical business so no? I, I handle a brand I handle a product the intent to go online is to sell products or services that's that's and to generate leads, no? parang sino ba interested, ka-convert ko siya, bibili ng produkto ko. In your case kasi, it's more challenging for a non-profit museum, right? Uh, what you put on site is also related to what Sir Patrick of Flores mentioned. He talked about conceptualization and content curation. Uh, so let me uh, give you an inspiration with this video. Hold on. Google and okay, I I got this uh, from TED Talk. Let me just take off my headset. My name is Amit and 18 months ago I had another job at Google and I pitched this idea of 
doing something with museums and art uh, to my boss, who's actually here, and she allowed me to do it. And uh, it took 18 months, a uh, lot of fun negotiations and stories, I can tell you, with 17 very interesting museums from nine countries, but I'm gonna focus on the demo. There are a lot of stories about why we did this. I think my personal story is explained very simply in the slide, and it's access. And I grew up in India, I uh, had a great education, I'm not complaining, but I didn't have access to a lot of these museums and these artworks. And so when I started traveling and going to these museums, I started learning a lot. And while working at Google, I tried to put this desire to make it more accessible with technology together. So we formed a team, a great team of people, and we started doing this. I'm gonna probably get into the demo and then, you know, tell you a couple of the interesting things we've had since launch. So simple, you come to googleartproject.com, you look around, all these museums here, you've got the Uffizi, you've got the MoMA, the Hermitage, the Reichs, the Van Gogh. I'm gonna actually get to one of my favorites, uh, the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Two ways of going in, very simple, click, and bang, you're in this museum. Doesn't matter where you are, Bombay, uh, Mexico, doesn't really matter. You move around, you have fun, you wanna navigate around the museum, open the plan up, and in one click, jump. You're in there, you wanna to go to the end of the corridor, keep going, have fun, you know, explore. Yeah. Thanks, I haven't come to the best part, so. <laughs> So now I'm in front of uh, one of my favorite paintings, The Harvesters by Peter Bruegel at the Met. I see this plus sign. If the museum has given us the image, you click on it. Now this is one of the images, so this is all the metadata information for those of you who are truly interested in art. You can click this, but I'm gonna click this off right now. And this is one of these images that we captured in what we call gigapixel technology. So this image, for example, has close to, I think, around 10 billion pixels. And I get a lot of people asking me, what do you get for 10 billion pixels? So I'm gonna try and show you what you really get for 10 billion pixels. You can zoom around very simply. You know, you see some fun stuff happening here. You know, I love this guy. His expression is priceless. But, but then you really wanna go deep. And so I started playing around, and I found something going on over here. And I was like, hold on, that sounds interesting. Went in, and I started noticing that these kids were actually beating something. I did a little research, spoke to a couple of my contacts at the Met, and actually found out that this is a game called Skoll, which involves beating a goose with a stick on Shrove Tuesday. And apparently it was quite popular. I don't know why they did it, but you know, I learned something <laughs> about it. Now, just, you know, we're really deep in, you can really get to the cracks. Now, just to give you some perspective, I'm gonna zoom out so you really see what you get. Here is where we were, and this, is the painting. So, the best is yet to come, so <laughs> give me a second. So now, let's just quickly jump into the MoMA, again in New York. So another one of my favorites, the Starry Night. Now, the example I showed you was all about finding details. But what if you want to see brush strokes? And what if you want to see, you know, how Van Gogh actually created this masterpiece? You zoom in, you really go in. I'm gonna to go to one of my favorite parts in this painting, and I'm really gonna to get to the cracks. This is the starry night, I think, you know, never seen like this before. I'm gonna show you my other favorite feature. There's a lot of other stuff here, but I don't have time. This is the real cool part. It's called collections. Any one of you, anybody, doesn't matter if you're rich, if you're poor, if you have, uh, you know, a fancy you know, house, doesn't matter, you can go and create your own museum online, create your own collection across all these images. Very simply, you go in, and I've created this called the power of zoom. You can just zoom around, this is the ambassadors, based in the National Gallery, you can annotate this stuff, send it to your friends, and really get a conversation going about what you're feeling when you go through these masterpieces. So I think in conclusion, uh, for me, the main thing is that all the amazing stuff here does not really come from Google. It doesn't, in my opinion, even come from the museums. Probably shouldn't say that. It, it really comes from these artists. And you know that's been my humbling experience in this. I mean, I hope in this digital medium that we do justice to their artwork and represent it properly online. And the biggest question I get asked nowadays is, did you do this to replicate the experience of going to a museum? 
And the answer is no, it's to supplement the experience. And that's it. Thank you. All right. So let me go back. So that was a video, actually, that was uh, in 2011. So uh, we know we, we after that, uh, we went through a lot of uh, challenges also, especially for brick and mortar, like the museums, right, uh, during the pandemic. So that was uh, 2011. Let me just switch back to my presentation. Okay. There you go. Okay. So he's talking about Google Art Project that come before, but now it's called... Hello, can you hear me? Yes. I, I okay. Heard. Okay. Sorry. I cannot hear myself. <laughs> okay. Let me try it again. Okay. So that was Google. Check. Um, but it's now arts and culture google.com. So you can actually browse it. Um, uh, they have over 400 museums uh, house in the site globally. And actually, when I look at the efforts of Google Art Project, I'm actually looking at the future of our museums now. Um, and the team of MMT will be the lead and will actually facilitate putting them together. And, and these sessions of learning and application is a start. But the effort of a third uh, of uh, Doc Ekin in coming up with the HEI Museums Directory is our first step. All right. So when you look at the museums here, um, as mentioned by the speaker, no, si Amit, he said, ano eh, it doesn't actually replace the physical experience. It actually supplement, right? Um, later, we can talk about how much content should be online, right? So we can discuss that. So when you explore the site, let me just uh, look at my other... Uh, screen here they have explore play they have nearby uh, and favorites no if you are in a certain location you will be able to detect which are the museums close to you okay so marami na siya and dami na niyang content na pinopulate museum siya and sometimes a uh, collection focus and sometimes artist focus siya okay and when when this museums uh, actually were onboarded Hindi siya parang wala pang online presence. So most of the museums in the Google Arts and Project, they have their own information site. Bago sila before they join. For example, this is MoMA, as mentioned by the speaker also, Museum of Modern Art in New York. Uh, when you see their, this is the site. They have improved this now all uh, throughout the years. No, when you look at the site, I just want to break it down a bit. No. Yung header niya, plan your visit, what's on, art, artist, store, and of course, the search. Okay, when when you go to plan your visit, yan, I just want to give you a... I talked about experience earlier, no? Pati yung the visitor's expectation. Sabi niya, it also gives you an idea, oh, this is my opening hours, this is what you can find, um, you, you have access to... Uh, for PWD, there's a wheelchair provided. Um, if you go to the site, uh, use QR codes when you want to access the features, etc. So, in the visitor guide, in anticipate nila when you arrive, this is the expectation. And because we are actually uh, bouncing back to normal, of course, safety is also important. So, people will ask, oh, pupunta ko ba dyan? safe ba yan? So, they also have a section of visit us safely, right? So, here, uh, it uh, defines the ayan, ano yung access where you have to, how do you get to the museum faster and what are the protocols of safety. It's complete, no? It's a complete guide. Okay. And then so what's on ya? They went to, it's not just about the events, it, it's about galleries, the film that was produced, the performance, any exhibition in the past, no? Kaya ang dami niyang content. Okay, although when you look at the number of exhibitions, that marami talaga. Okay, and then art and artists, no? This is how deep the library is. You have artists and there's audio. I'll talk about audio in a while, no? I, I didn't cover this in the past. How do you actually create audio without any cost? Because it is always critical to us, no? Ano bang cost niyan? 
later I'll talk about it. Okay, so check it out. Try to learn from it. And also interesting though, they, they also have a store. Although when you look at the store, it's not all about artworks, no? mga merchandising that they created. I think Museo Cordillera started doing that. No? They have a shop and they are trying to sell it also online. So, yeah, just to give you an inspiration. Okay, now that we are in year two, level one, I just want to know if you have decided how much content that you should put online. Can I, I see a show of hands to who already parang planned about this? Because you know, naman in our uh, outline, you will be asked to to create a website or a virtual museum. Have you guys thought about it? Just a question. Meron ba siyang heart na lang? You can just share me a symbol. <laughs> okay, good, good. Uh -oh. Kasi we're in year two now, so I expect na, you, you talk about this a lot of times no, internally. Okay, that's good. I'm not going to ask you to put 100% of your collection. It could be 30% of your collection. I will actually, uh, this is also, I align this with Doc Eken. No? How much of your collection is online no, for Museo Cordillera? It's 30%. Okay, when you have an exhibition, do you actually stage the whole exhibition on site? Uh, it could be yes, depending on your ano, uh, strategy, or it could all, only be a preview. Okay. In the case of a 3D museum, yung buong layout, no, do I pull, do I put everything? In the case of Museo Cordillera, they did, no. But you can also just highlight. Uh, some galleries, no. If it's a big group, if, if it's a big museum, you can just highlight one. It can it can be a preview lang. So, yan um, again, and in mind mo, it is it is it will just supplement. It's not a replacement. All right. Okay. I will proceed with my next question. Last year, I also talked about how to to consider yung designs nyo, uh, the graphics, the typography. And yesterday, it was also emphasized by Gerard, right? So have you already established the objectives of your website and the virtual museum? Can I see a thumbs up? Kung hindi pa, sige, no reaction muna. <laughs> Anyone? Na Napag-isipan nyo na ba to? Okay. Okay, so wala, well, not, not yet, not yet. Oh, heart, okay, at least there's one, no? decisive na siya. Okay, my next question is, have you looked into your collection and decided on your digital stories? Okay. Again, the word is curation. Hindi pwedeng meron ako ilagay ko. What is your story? Yung story mo, you look at your collection. Like in the case, I'll just use Maser Cordillera. The focus it is really textile, but there are a lot of collections. Very focus on textile, and there is a lot of things to talk about the textile, right? Um, sometimes in in ano, no, in in digital content, creating interest based niche content is has a greater impact than having a generalized content. And another thing, once you launch this, ano story mo after a quarter? Diba? After we, we post this outside, ano yung story mo the following month? Tapos next month, next month, diba? You also have to plan that. If, if I were to work with you, I will ask for your one-year plan, eh, the digital story. Kasi you have to prepare for that. Hindi siya parang out of whim lang. Or ito lagay natin. Ito ganyan. So it should have a calendar so that you establish also the discipline. Okay. And like aside from Museo Cordillera, like the, some natural history museum, they highlight endor, endangered species. So that's also a good ano, angle when you talk about digital story. Okay, my next question is, have you identified features of your website? Okay, um, last year, I've introduced uh, some tools, like if you have books, you can use an interactive uh, book. This is actually free or like less than a ten dollar, or like less than ten dollars, not five hundred pesos per per month of subscription. No? You can use a uh, issue, uh, flipping book, hazin, any flip. No, 
I also talked to some of the museums and told them if you want to if you want to emphasize a location, you can have an interactive topography with the points of interest. Then I also encourage learning to come up with an animation, a simple one that's also interactive. No, it, it, somehow it's ano na rin, um, gamified your experience. Niya. And if you have a history, always have an interactive timeline. So have you guys identified features of your website? I'm sure meron na, no? May mga, uh, you have already listed this down. Okay, that's good. Thanks for that reaction. Okay, and I, I spoke about, I, I mentioned games, no? Like in Google Arts and Culture, they have games. These games are really kind of expensive it's, if it's customized. Um, like, uh, Guess the Line, it has geo artwork. Uh, Guess the Line has AI capability, judges your drawing skill. Hopper naman, guess what your artwork, where the uh, artwork was created. Pottery is actually... You sculpt your own pottery, no? Medyo expensive siya if you will customize, no? And in the site, there are also um, crossword puzzle, uh, fill in the blanks, no? Parang mga, a lot of games that, you, that they were able to populate. Again, they put this up for 10 years, eh? So marami na siyang content dyan. And marami na siyang uh, contributor, no? Uh, I just want to highlight this. Aside from... Um, co-creation, you can also collaborate with partners to create your content on site. Now, my advice, since this is expensive, as mentioned, you will customize one, I suggest you actually explore some white label web-based interactive games. When I say white label, papalitan mo na lang yung branch kayo mga... <laughs> Mga little things to, to customize it para sa you, and then you you can actually put it on your site. So you have an interactive game na. So you can explore Play to Max. It's one of the leading companies na they use HTML5. Sorry for the word HTML5. It's the uh it's the website format no. It has a por portfolio of more than 100 games, and there's also Pick and Poke. They have puzzle, quick win, and uh, quick win games, and also arcade. So explore this again, as mentioned by Gerard. Explore this with your developer. Okay. Okay. Have you also? I'll just move the bar. Have you also started producing your multimedia format for your photos and videos? Okay. I know you've encountered. I just want to highlight this a bit, though. I know you've encountered different formats such as PNG, JPEG, JPG, or GIF. PNG, please remember, if you're preparing for your content, you use it for logos. It has the transparency. Eh. So pag logo siya over a page, ano siya, may transparency siya. Hindi, hindi siya parang nakablock, no? Hindi siya naka-enclose. Naka and there's JPEG. We use it for the thumbnail and also for the photos because it has a lower file size. GIF naman, you encounter this if the images are in animation. So these are the usual format. My suggestion, start preparing this. If you don't outsource your creative, you can start saving it in these formats. Okay. Now, on the video, I know um, see Professor Ted last time, I think, taught you how to create videos. But the, the most used, or uh, especially for beginners, no, it's Lightworks or Adobe. No? Uh, but for me, no, parang Canva is the best for the beginner. They already have um, an editing capability, no? video editing capability. Try to cre uh, create an account, explore it, try to dump your video, create kind of parang editing ng, ng strip of, um, let's say, even photos, you just put it together, use Canva. Is it free? Uh, it, it is free, but certain may in-app purchase siya. Okay. All right. And then I, I didn't talk about it, but let me dwell on this. Because when I saw MoMA with audio collection, no, I just want to highlight that you can also do this. Have you heard of text-to-speech? Google text-to-speech? Okay. If not, uh, okay, that's good. Let me just for others lang no. Para meron if you have a lot of content in the no. Man, you don't need to hire voice talent kasi uh usually kasi bahat ng voice talent. So let me just go 
to the actual Google text to speech. A sample. Okay. Guys, the reason I'm talking about this, this will actually lead to the con uh, creation of your virtual museum. So build up lang to, and where do we place it? So for example, let me just I put this text here so it can already read it. Learn about the Cordillera culture at the Museo Cordillera of the University of the Philippines Baguio, an ethnographic museum dedicated to the preservation and enrichment of indigenous cultures in northern Luzon. Okay, magaling, no? I mean, you know, what, what, what's nice about the Google to, text to speech? I, again, I'm a fan of Google, but they have a lot of, <laughs> pero I'm a fan of a lot of other ano, ano, providers. But then, what's nice about it, na develop na rin yung diction ng pang Filipino, no? Parang, kasi dati talagang slang na slang. When we were working with Benka Museum, um, Google Google has difficulty to pronounce Sabel, no? Uh, who was the featured model or, I think, Character in Ben Cobb's ano, ano, artwork. So, hindi niya ma-pronounce yung Sabel. Parang Sabel. Okay. Okay, this is, ano, I just wanna play around with this. I try, if I type maganda, kasabi niya, sorry, if I type maganda. Maganda. Maganda, di ba? So, what we did, you can play around with this. Lalo na pag Filipino words, itry mo isilabigit, iba din yung pronunciation niya. Maganda. Maganda. Or you can now adjust the speed. Okay, I just want to show you the the trick here. Okay. Maganda. Maganda. So eventually, malapit na siya. Pero uh, when you uh, explore this more, you can actually have a lot of voice uh, formats. No, may Asian na siya, hindi na US. So again, you can consider this um as part of your content no especially when we put together the museum the vir virtual museum okay let me go back thank you for that reaction again <laughs> okay So try it. Put all your uh, all, the, all your actually yun yung maganda. You have a text. Just dump it there. They will translate. It, the system will translate it. May reverse naman. If you have an audio, you dump it there. May tinatawag na speech to text. It's gonna automatically write or uh, transcribe. Sorry, the, the into text naman. So it's a reverse. So both uh, they have the facility. No. Now I, I'll go to info tags. Why, uh, when I talk about info tags, um, if you have a virtual walkthrough, you also have to prepare for this. These are additional things in the form of description, like what you're seeing right now. Uh, it has an image. So when I tap on it, it actually has an image, PDF, video. You, you can attach any of this format. Why is it important? Kunar na create a virtual museum. Like um, if I've I've seen the video earlier, Mr. Cordillera, lahat ng textile niya merong info tags sa tawag doon. If Matterport yung ginamit nila at uh, Doc Ikin, it's the matter tags they call it. So you have to prepare for this. Ma little ano lang siya, short description lang. Don't put a lot of description. Don't put like the three paragraphs. So like points of interest lang siya. So aside from that, you can actually add another website, a link to another website. A link to a form, or let's say you want to sell this item, it's a link to your shop. So again, prepare for it. If you're now, you know uh, which uh, part of your gallery will be, you will put in the 3D museum. Prepare for the info tags, okay? Okay. Before I go to the virtual museum platforms, I just want to ask this though. I, I want to know the readiness of your team. Although MMT team plus the consultants are here for, uh, to assist you, have you revisited your team and organized your methodology? Um, last year, no. I have a I have a recording also. I I, I introduced to you the RASI chart, the the project schedule, the flow, the wireframes. No, I just want you to be ready. And also, who is your content creator in the team? 
the content creator should have the capability to take a photo and of course take a video but you don't actually get a lot of people in the I don't know in the team so have you guys organized now your team are you prepared to do this can I see a reaction again oh okay the expressions oh <laughs> That's a fun expression. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Parang surprise yun eh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now I'll go to the what are the available virtual museum platforms. Okay. I don't have time. I'm time checked 15 minutes to go. I don't have time to actually demo how to put it together, but I'll give you some of the platforms. And okay. The first one is Matterport. Uh, there are two things, two uh, platforms that I'm going to mention because we have experience. Actually, three. Uh, the rest, we haven't executed something on those platforms. So, Matterport is also what um, Museo Cordillera used. No? It's a virtual tour platform that uses 3D space capture technology. It transforms to real life spaces into immersive digital twin models. No, because uh, you're looking at uh, different angles. No? And from one model, you can actually jump to another, sorry, from one virtual tour, you can jump to another virtual tour. Okay, yun yung capability niya. So you can attach two models at the same time. Okay, we also shared with you what are the capture devices that you can use on Matterport. Uh, maybe uh, from the MMP side, you can... We can discuss on how we can help HEIs on actually putting the investment of this camera because you only have to capture it once unless you have a new exhibitions or in gallery, you capture it again, right? So there are capture devices that we spoke about last time. Uh, Ramil can dwell on this next uh, on June 10 when he actually gives the demo. Okay, these are the capture devices. You have 360 cameras. Um, all of this, when you capture it, it is capable of VR. That's Latcha 360. But anyway, anyway, yung difference niya lang is really the type of quality, no? Uh, especially for outdoor. And, and also the resolution no, of the output. Yun lang yung ano niya, variation niya. But you can start with a 360 camera. And we also spoke before that there's already a Matterport mobile. You can do the editing from your mobile. So on the go. Uh, portable, siya, you have a website from your laptop or you go mobile. No? You can fix that. Okay. You can also create a free account, right? Um, it costs you $10 a month for five spaces, five virtual spaces. Okay. Yeah. And this is a sample one. We were actually trying to put it together uh, to form the actual uh, space. Okay. And then I will show you, I'll show you another video that Matterport is already uh, VR device compatible. So if you're able to create the 3D uh, spaces, you can now actually attach it to a VR device, but uh, you can view it from that VR device also. Let me just play this video. So we're here in the present. Um, um, the browser and let's find the models. So I like the destination railway gallery. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm not that is what I heard. Oh, there it is. I like this one, the National Gallery. And the first thing you'll notice is on Oculus we show you this huge bunch of VR buttons. There's no doubt about where you should click. And other than that, you're in VR. And so one of the first things you'll notice is how you navigate around just like in Showcase using the four parts. Just pointing next to one of them and you'll see very clearly which one you are going to. So in the old VR apps you used to have these kind of floating spheres of so you have this tend to stare and so now it just looks just like showcase. The other thing I wanted to point out is the quality. 
So on an Oculus Quest, we're able to use much higher resolution. Um, so we can actually use uh, the high resolution um, Kairanas to show you. So you can actually see these, these uh, paintings like really, really detailed. You can almost read the plaques, not quite, not from this distance, uh, but the imagery is really, really vivid. Let me show you one other model with real quick. Okay, um, I will just, I'll just cut the, the video, it's kind of long. But the idea here is, if you already have the 3D spaces, or your 3D uh, virtual museum, we can easily port it to that uh, VR device. So in VR device, lang, not everybody appreciates that. It's 3D the comfort eh, when you move. But it's nice to have, lang, but we're not saying uh, invest. But let's say, imagine you already have that capture. When they go on site, if it, ano na siya, no, may safe naman, you can actually deploy device, VR devices and you can use the same content. So less investment can have same content that you use, right? So let me continue. I'll go back. Okay. Let's have sharing. Okay. Um, we also have Cupix as another platform. That one. This one. Okay, uh, but usually the case studies for this is retail. Yeah, and I won't play the video anymore. Let's see, get quick now. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, but the question is, what if mo ko, Everett, what if I don't have a venue? I don't have a gallery, but I already have the artworks. No? Um, another way to approach it is to use Constra Matrix. Constra Matrix, um, you only have the artwork. Tapos, we will actually create the virtual exhibit, no? the, the venue, the space. No? This is similar to what was done for Metro Bank Made. I'll just uh, acknowledge Metro Bank for that. <laughs> so they use uh, Cons Matrix. Okay. I will go to the exact uh, site, to the website. Please bear with me. Okay. When you go to virtual exhibit of Metro Bank, they actually have your virtual exhibit 2021 and 2011. So when you enter the exhibition, Shampere Metro Bank doesn't have a gallery. I, I think they don't have a gallery. So And they have a lot of uh, artworks to be featured. So you enter the exhibition. Okay. So ito, virtual space lang siya talaga. Tapos hike. Um, yeah. I'm kind of slow. I can move forward. I can move to the left. Yeah. Okay, move further. Yeah. Thus, you can look into the detail, the mga artwork, and even the sculpture, and the details of the artist. Yeah. And here, if I want to check the painting, yeah. Okay. But if you don't want to scroll, especially. Sabi mo na lang, start tour na lang. Okay. Can you tour me? Yeah. This is an automated tour. The automated tour is something you should also explore. Uh, both in Matterport and Constrix because embedded ano na siya feature. So yung nag explore siya. You can actually put a timing, no? Get a timer for every move from one artwork to another. Okay, maybe you can check it later after our 
session. Okay, let me go back again to my PowerPoint. There you go. Okay, so uh, thank you. Please bear with me. Uh, I always switch back and forth to an online site and back to my PowerPoint. <laughs> okay. But uh, two more slides now. Okay. And another virtual uh, platform I want to mention is really that Web 3.0. Sabi nila Web.30, ano ba to? I, you're hearing this, maybe in Spider-Man. We were talking about Metaverse. So a lot of people are curious, ano ba to Metaverse na to, right? Sorry, can you see, can you see my PowerPoint again? Here. I stop share. Okay. And you're also hearing the word NFT, no? non-fungible token, especially for artwork. Uh, but because we have limited time, sorry, I cannot go back. Hold on. What's happening? Okay. Sorry, guys. <laughs> all right. I won't actually, all right. So metaverse, I'll just, okay, here we go. Um, when we talk about metaverse, this is already the web 3.0. No? The web takes data and transforms it into you know, the image that people can see and sometimes interact with. No? While metaverse takes the same data, puts it in the 3D image and and make it more immersive in the experience. Parang ganto lang yan. When you are, sorry, I just want to highlight metaverse because you're going to hear about this. So, parang sa metaverse, di ba tayo when we play a video, usually you you are you can control it. It's 2D, no? But once that you're a part of that real world, of that world, it is a metaverse. So, uh, usually na, ang, ang tanong sa amin is VR, AR, uh, our metaverses. No, no, no. They aren't the metaverse itself. It actually encapsul uh, encapsulates not only VR and AR, but many immersive experiences. So, siya yung world. Tapos yung VR, AR are content within the metaverse. So, yun. This is another virtual platform that I don't want us to explore at this point, but maybe in the future. But you also have to keep an open mind because metaverses are being used by brand museums, and also product, no. Um, it's it's not it's not it's at certain point may hype na rin siya. Eventually, a lot of a lot of uh, companies are already inside the metaverse, even your museum. So, let me again play this video. I have a lot of videos. There, the first ever metaverse history museum.
So time check, uh, one minute to go. So the metaverse now is many things and it will change. So um, since we are your partner, we'll always keep you posted on what's happening on this virtual platform. So um, next, um, I will end here to give way to the Q&A. Ramil Escarda will also deep, uh, give you a deep dive with an actual demo of creation next week on June 10. He will also tackle a bit on the non-fungible tokens, so the NFT in, metaverse, in the metaverse, particularly on the artworks. So uh, that's it. Thank you. I apologize for some inconvenience in my transition slides. Thank you so much, guys. Okay, thank you so much, Everett. So uh, we are now accepting uh, questions now for the webinars. Now, so please type in your questions and uh, we'll try to respond. No? Okay, so uh, may mga tanong ba kayo? Napaka complex, no? So yesterday, the questions were more on uh, how and how much, no? So today... Siguro, uh, we can expand more on the how process and also the possibilities no, of uh, turning your museums into uh, a, a 3D virtual museum. So maybe, um, Everett, uh, okay, so like I mentioned yesterday, most of our, uh, our participants are maybe 80% are new uh, newcomers and then the 20% are returning uh, attendees no, from year one. Okay, and uh, I observed yesterday that the consideration is regarding to the budget. No? So uh, is there an inexpensive way of turning, um, let's say their museum no, to have a, a digital presence through the 3D uh, virtual museum? Yes, uh, uh, Doc Ikin, I always consider the cost. In fact, the tools that I presented, mga ano yan, free tools, no? even on the website. Um, I'm not sure though. Um, yesterday, no, uh, Gerard mentioned, because we have to talk about the website. Is it expensive? No, we can also go with free website. No, ang magiging concern mo na lang din sa overhead mo, you pay for the hosting. No, He talks about the domain, ganyan. And sino yung mag-execute? The execution, kung kaya ng mga guys nyo, and we teach it naman, I think they can do it. No? This is very ano, uh, comprehensive naman the way we, we talk about it. You can always email me back no? and ask even Ramil, even Gerard, I think he's willing to be email, ano, no? um, ask about it. Um, so website, I don't think it's expensive. Sa virtual museum, si Matterport, we're paying it ten dollars per month. Per month, no? yeah. What's ten ten dollars? Five hundred pesos, five hundred twenty pesos, no. And you can have five spaces. Ah, uh, yung mga interactive game, pwedeng hanap pa kay libre. Kasi yung white label, kasi medyo may ano pa yun eh. Um, timeline, appointment system, built in na yan sa tools. If you're gonna use WordPress, so if I were, if you you are to ask to ask me. I don't think you can spend much, but except for the cameras, yan, baka mahal tayo, 360 camera yan eh. So, um, you have to invest once, tapos you use it several times. Or you can actually invest it for the team, no? Just borrow na lang, we pass it on, especially when we do our technical workshop. So, very affordable na siya at this point. Because there's a lot of, there are a lot of tools na, Per, uh, per month of use or kaya uh, advertising na, di ba? May magpa-pop up lang say When I'm using Canva, libre na lahat yung mga content doon. Video production ko, madali na, di ba? Walang bayad. Pero pag gumamit ako ng premium uh, design or stock photo, that's the time I have to pay, right? So, but you can manage it. You have a lot of like flexibility. Yeah. Uh, just to ano lang sum up, I've always considered, I've always considered the free tools for you guys. Para you can start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, oh, oh. Uh, yeah, that's very interesting. No, yung mga pwedeng gamitin na mga free tools, no, for your lalo na sa startup museums. It's very uh, useful, no. Yes. Um, okay, here are the questions already coming in uh, from Oscar Esteban Florendo. 
Uh, he is asking what's a good brand or type of 360 cameras. Okay. Uh, when you go to Matterport, again, the reason Matterport, kasi model natin si Museo Cordillera, they use it, no? And a lot of museums have started using it. They have what you call the Cortex AI. So yung 2D mo can transform to 3D spaces automatically, indoor and outdoor. And again, this is the expensive one, no? Uh, the, 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 the cheapest one is $300. Mm. So yun, two one thousand dollars. So again, resolution siya. So um, yan yun something that I we don't have control because it's really hardware investment. But uh, again, it can be shared maybe. So a, a team of museum sharing a single uh, no, no, hardware or something like that. Yeah, okay. Cortex AI. It's Cortex the AI. AI. All right. Yes. Okay, take note, guys. Uh, uh, I like the idea of uh, the one you presented earlier on the art google something port or something uh so that's my vision actually for year three okay. so that will be the the gateway not to for other museums to feature their regional museums and for the hei uh, museums as well so uh to start that up, maybe uh, when they come in level two, no, uh, we'll give them an orientation on that. And then, uh, mas importante on the content, no, kailangan ready na kayo sa content. So, could you give advice on, on, on the kind of content that they need to prepare, not only for the 3D virtual museum, but also for the website? Thank you. Meron tayo mga tinatawag na hygiene content, no. Of course, uh, we talk about what's the museum now? Your objective, your mission statement, okay. Because we also, if, if we have enough time, we have to review whether your uh, write-up is also SEO friendly, no? In terms of search, right? Because you want to be searched online. So prepare about your museum. Um, look at your collection. Take a high-res photos or images of your collection and start writing about it. All the information back in the history, lahat na makukuha nyo, populate it, put it in one and all. And then your videos in the past, whether old yan, new yan, put them together in all, ano, no, dump it in one storage. Tapos, um, I think yun lang eh. Kasi from there, we start the curation. I cannot touch on the curation. We, we have a lot of curators who are involved. Pero yung whatever they curate, we put it online. Ganun lang yun eh. Again, 30% or a preview of what you have. So you, you start doing that now as early as now. And then, sorry, yeah, going back to the collection, you, you saw the, the tags, right? You have to define. Like, what are the textile that I see at the back of uh, no, no, Doc Egan? What, what is this? What is this pattern? You talk about it. So maraming writing na needed. Oh, we start with that. And then, yun yung, yun yung mga hygiene content. And what else? Um. Of course, your location, yeah, mga typical na yun, madali na siya eh. So, yun, those things that we have to ano, prepare. Yeah, so, okay. uh, yeah, uh, maraming preparations no, in relation to the content because yes. uh, that's the body of materials that you're using no, for your website. So, it's important to gather all of them and then, of course, when you come later on in Baguio, you can curate it, no? Anong mga classic information yung ilalagay dyan. Okay, so uh, a question from Lisa Tamargo. Is there an actual training on website development for museum staff? Are you, Dr. Lisa, are you asking for the face-to-face -face in Baguio? Yes. Di ba, Evert? <laughs> yes, yes was... willing to help you guys. Yeah. yeah. Uh -oh. There will be a, a, a training, a, a session for this one no? because many people uh, requested for this session on uh, museum development. So uh, maybe uh, we'll talk to Everett in the coming weeks no? to prepare the exercises and module for the Baguio, Baguio leg. Okay, another question. Uh, okay, how can we create the 3D space which we can use or upload in Matterport. We have a space and uh, we have a space and collections. Do we just shoot a normal video of the collection and space, 
or will, will this be covered in next week's uh, sessions? I will give it to Ramil to actually give you, you know, there, there may certain technique kasi when you capture that, eh, where you put the camera. So before you do anything, no, um, I will defer it for the next week's session. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, uh, dun sa Museo Cordillera, the one we did, there's a special camera for the 360. 60, yes. Uh, so may, may, uh, it's not the regular camera that you use, but you have to use that kind, no? Yes. Um, and where you position the camera also. Yeah, and very important. Yeah. And the lighting, etc. So uh, I hope you can learn from the session next week. Uh, yes. Okay, another question. Are Matterport and Kunz Matrix software user-friendly? Um, okay, I might be jaded. No? Uh, I find it friendly. But we also, I'm open to your feedback. Do you find it friendly after we execute that? Because there are free, ano naman, no? free execution or implementation. As far as I'm concerned and the rest of the people that I know, they find it friendly. Okay, but for you guys, I will be glad to get your feedback. And if it's not friendly enough for you guys, we should be looking for an alternative. We don't stop with what we have right now. So that's my answer lang. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Oh, well, the matter part, uh, user-friendly naman siya. No? I'm not sure with Kunz Matrix. We haven't tried. No? Maybe we should explore that and do some comparison. No? Okay. So another question, uh, uh, is WordPress a good alternative for a free website? Um, it, it is, uh, yeah, you can, you can use WordPress. Um, but there are other tools uh, like Udo. Uh, the, the, the concern with WordPress, in my experience, again, ito na naman yung, is it user-friendly when it comes to the content management system? May konting adoption kasi. Uh, but there are other tools. Pa. We can talk about it when we get to level three. We, we actually show you a side-by-side -side comparison. But it is a good alternative. But there are other options also. And it's free. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Because uh, uh, I'm teaching museology now, so I ask my students to create an exhibition plan or a virtual tour use, using SketchUp. Is that okay to use? Sketch up. Yeah, pwede naman, uh, Doc Ikin. Pero for website, kasi hindi siya, sorry, may, may other things that nag, nasa yeah. top 10 of tools eh. Yes po. Okay. Yes. okay. All right. Next, uh, para exercises kasi yun sa exhibition plan. So, uh, okay. use that for, uh, it's a sketch up for the others. No? Sketch up is like a, a 3D design. Yes, so. No? so Pero can, pag sa platform ng website, yeah. Ano, yeah, hindi siya sa, ano. Yes, it's different from the, uh, when you use it in the website. Okay, another question. As now, we have not identified a space, a specific space for our museum. Can you further discuss how to use Kunst Matrix? What requirements like equipment do we need to produce a museum using this? Song? Okay, Kunst Matrix is easier. You don't need a 360 camera. So get a SLR camera, sorry. Even your phone is high res nano. Capture the artwork. Let's say you have five, no? I, I, I encourage you to do this. Capture five, go to Kunst Matrix uh, site. Meron siyang libre. You can, I think, select one template free. Then you try it to upload. You select the template and where, then position your paintings lang where do you want to put it. Tapos iran bo lang siya. I encourage you to do that. It's easier. Walang kailang specialized uh, equipment. So para upload and go. That's it. Yeah. Wow. Ambilis. Oh, mm. oh, amazing. No? Okay. Another question. The Google Art Camera has billions of megapixels <laughs> to create this ultra. HD images. Would you know a similar technology of a camera model kahit less megapixels than Google's in the Philippines? Okay. Uh, anonymous attendee, can I get back to you on this? Even I, I was really uh, curious about the camera that was used. No, I, I wasn't able to research what they use. Parang nasa Ultra HD 8K, no? And even any content locally, I haven't seen any. Eh, no? Pero ang galing niya, no? I, I, can I... 
course it to MMT team. I'll get back to you on what kind of camera. Okay. And I think Ramil has an answer on this by next week. No, it's more technical on on uh, capturing you know, spaces. All right. And okay. Things, yeah. Thank you. There's a question here uh, with regards to creating a virtual tour. Do you think that the needs of the people going to the museum are the same online and offline? And will virtual tours address the demands of the public from museums? Okay. Um, if you are an uh, art enthusiast, I think uh, going online is not sufficient. If you are not comfortable browsing your 3D with, with arrows, no, it's, there's difficulty. I don't think it's sufficient. So these are the two types of um, target audience that actually still will visit your museum. The second question, sorry, the second question is... Uh, will, will, will 12 tours address the demands of the public from museums? Okay, it, it can, it can, but again, but you don't have to give them everything online. It can address. It's the pain point right now. No, I cannot go there. Um, we have limited. I, I don't know with Mr. Cordillera. You're still close, at the, uh, Doc Eakin, right? You're still close. Yeah. No, so it can address the need of the need of this cost of if this audience who wants to see the museum. No, to know about what is being um, updated. No, in the exhibition, yes, but it should not be sufficient. You always create the need not to drive them to your physical. Uh, space. Yes. Or you create the mystery. That's why they have Magaling to, see you know, Doc on the mystery. <laughs> <laughs> or the curiosity of the yeah. museum not to uh, encourage them to come physically to the museum. Because I'm more biased of of course, the I, I love going to the museums physically and uh, looking at the exhibition. Uh, I'm also interested on how they mount the exhibitions now depending on, on like for instance, anong classing objects yung nakamount, anong classing mounting system or display cases. So I, I really love looking into that physically. You cannot find this in the online museums, no? yung setup, no? the behind the scene work no? in the installation of artifacts. So I'm more interested uh, in looking at the physical museum going there. So online kasi, like what uh, Everett presented, this is to supplement the physical museum. no? And of course, uh, with our changing times, the direction for the museums now is to really go digital. And uh, like I mentioned yesterday, uh, with the move of Museo Cordillera to have online uh, website and the 3D virtual museum, it has helped in our online pedagogy. No? So sa teaching, uh, and then yung mga ibang high schools, no? mga ibang estudyante na nangangailangan ng mga materials about Cordillera artifacts, they come to the website. They go to the website and check now for themselves and gather information from them. So it's like doing field work in a virtual uh, set up no so madami ding mga benefits yon but although if uh, things are better no in the coming months in the coming years we really highly encourage people to visit uh, the museums okay may tanong pa ba kayo okay last question unless meron pa wala ubos na yata so last question in your experience are all virtual tours cost effective uh, this is because virtual tourism doesn't does not provide the economic benefits that traditional traditional tourism does. Any thoughts? Um, my, my thoughts about it. Um, we have to change also our my perspective on what we put online. No? I, I don't discourage you to. I I encourage you, pala. If we have a way to monetize things, no? I'm again sorry, brand and product person, ako, so I'll just share my thoughts about it. Um, uh, in the business model online, kasi meron kang e-commerce, no? their shop, right? MoMA, MoMA, you will see MoMA did it. No? Meron siya mga small items. And if you are from, let's say, Uifugao, Kalinga, right? There are things that you can actually collaborate with, like the uh, LGU, no? Kasi when they, sorry, I'll talk about a bit lang. When they go to your site and 
and see na ay I can I have access to delicacies together with whatever I have no pwede mo siyang I, there could be transactional no on site second remember we have webinars this one is i know this is like available to all at no cost no the training but you can have your webinars and you can actually uh, get sponsors for that diba sponsorship wag na tayo pabayad kasi hindi uso yung nagbabayad ng webinar it's all free but uh -huh. you get sponsors so, okay yeah. so it it now creates another benefit no to you um Pwede rin kasi may featured gallery, they pay online, tapos they go to your, your venue. No? You, you make use of that tool. Even the appointment system is very important. Appointment system. It creates a benefit eh. Kasi pagdating nila doon, hindi na sila mag -queue, right? May, maybe it's not monetary, but it's the convenience. No, it's the convenience that you have. It's, it's also your, your branding as a museum. That's a benefit. Okay? And they will see na how... How fast have you adapted to this kind of technology? Because eventually, sabi ng nila locally parang nakulang na sa Pilipinas, so we're really really behind with all of the global museums. So medyo behind tayo. Oh, thanks to MMT, this is really a good initiative, no? So yun yung nakikita ko na ways to actually create benefit, no? And always tap in my tap in my tap in our mind yung ano education. Yun yung nakikita ko ng benefit yan. Uh oh, actually, uh, yes, we are exploring halimbawa the uh, eto mga webinars kasi uh, uh, if you want to listen, you have to pay per view parang ganyan. You can actually monetize, but since we are government, uh, we have to serve no the communities no so it's uh, given away for free. So, yung mga sa Museo Cordillera, we just uh, get na uh, mga sales from our online museum shop. Now we sell books online. Uh, we also have merch now for sale, and we have used Shopee also. No, uh, yung mga ganyang platforms you can actually connect that, and then you know you can sell online uh, for this. No, okay. My question, pa si uh, Eric. Okay, or comment, uh, perhaps using community-based uh, tourism model can be explored for virtual tours or Gumroad for museum e-publications. Actually, it's spot on, Eric. No, that's not a good idea. Uh, we should not be narrow-minded when we look at our museum. We involve the community. And I think there was a topic about it, no? Ah, uh, hindi ka stand alone na museum. Eh. You're part of a bigger ano no um culture, de ba? You promote everything within your LGU, and it's gonna make sense both online yan. Kasi you tell them this is what we can do, no? When you experience our museum, you can also have this access to the following, de ba? In your, I'm not so far, far familiar with the, the region, sorry. <laughs> and then masada na technology base na so. Yun and then yeah, it's community based the way you approach. No, on a smaller scale, your the um, initiative of uh, Doc Ikin is on the whole museums na nationwide. No, kayo naman regional. Why not? I'm very excited about the idea. <laughs> Actually, uh, ato pa si Neva, yeah. Patreon allows for a scalable subscription of sorts. Yeah, uh, yeah. So. Uh, whatever it said no i'm uh, so now we will have the year 3 that's uh, actually my vision no to have all hai museums or regional museums no, but to be incorporated into that one get 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 gateway where they can click and uh, visit your museums or no online and then they can uh, actually look at your products no may mga publications kayo dyan, mga events or activities no so that will be in a, like one um how do you call that website where you have all these museum logos na ko sinabi ko na spill na ko na ng beans for the year 3 where you have that uh, museum logos, no, and or photos of your yes. museum, you can pick, and then that will open to a wider connectivity in relation to um, uh, the museum, no. Yeah, and so, just to excite you, at uh, uh, Doc Ikens, um, ito yung ano eh, parang hindi nila malalaman if you don't have your online presence, okay? Uh -uh. To use that again, yung journey natin, social is 
good. Instagramable yan. May TikTok ka pa dyan. Diba? Meron ka pang ano. Dali mo sa site, they get the information. But it doesn't stop there. Dali mo siya sa region nyo. Right? Yeah. And this is a good vision for all of the participants today. And just yeah. to excite you, we do not stop. Right? Mm-hmm. So within the, for instance, I know in Bicol, no, maraming mga local museums dyan, no, So mga nganak siya, it will metastasize into several uh, websites no, kung kailangan lang natin sipagan yung pag-develop ng uh, um, website. No? Okay. Uh, so may uh, comment pa si Eric, for visual artists who are not so techy, perhaps museum curators can assist in digitizing. Yes, uh, we do that. No, uh, We do give assistance uh, for the digitization. No? We can discuss that in, the, in Baguio when you come in August. Uh, we can explore that. So, uh, meantime, when when I was um, I, when I mentioned earlier about regional museums and also regional museums and then other museums, not can connect into that one umbrella of museums in one website, connecting that with the other uh, museums around the Philippines. No, so maganda yon na uh, peding explore or we can do that for year three. Okay, uh, no more questions. Uh, thank you so much to all our participants. Um, then uh, please answer our feedback form nasa baba na, no? So any last words from Everett? Okay, um, again, thank you, Doc Ikin. Thank you, everyone. I, I hope to see you in our level two, right? Please stay excited. Don't be overwhelmed. <laughs> this is not a complex implementation. We're here for you guys no, to, to assist you so that you can actually achieve a good digital output no, together with Gerard, with the uh, curation uh, tips from uh, Sir Patrick Flores and even Sir Danny Alvarez. And next week, please look forward to the actual demo of Ramil for this one. All right. Okay. Have a good lunch. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Ever. We'll see you again. Thank you so much for your time and ed- energy in sharing your knowledge. Okay. Maraming salamat, Ever, for that. So now uh, we would like to encourage everyone to please answer our uh, brief assessment survey, no, for the certificate of attendance uh, for today, and then next week uh, we will have. Uh, Rose, can you flash our poster? We will have um, part two of uh, the continuing talk on developing 3D museums with Ramil Escarda. Uh, he's with the Digify Incorporated of GMA Network in Manila. Then we also have uh, a case study with uh, Ms. Mariles Gustillo. She's the Executive Director of Ayala Museum. She will present a case study of the Ayala Museum on digital museum. So you can actually uh, visit the site no, of the Ayala Museum. Now, how they did it, then uh, she will uh, give us an orientation or a brief webinar on that in terms of the benefits of uh, digital museums. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. We'll see you again on next week and please answer our uh, feedback form. Thank you so much and have a good lunch. See you all next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>